All right, everyone, we start off today talking about Joe Biden being unloved and having a tantrum over that fact. He's not being invited to a lot of political events. I can't imagine why. Uh, basically, it's limited to a handful of candidates at the federal and state level who are heavily favored to win. And I think they just want to have like the photo op with the dude who happens to be the steward at the time because they're not worried about him showing up, saying something crazy and them losing support because they were on the stage at the same time. I would note that this happens in the context of Joe Biden making one of those appearances, one of the few, with a mainline candidate, which happens to be John Fetterman. Uh, link in the description, not archived because it's a video clip. Yeah, please watch this and see what you see. Biden is questioned about why so few candidates are asking him to show up and why some have outright resisted him showing up to campaign for them. And he says, can't you do math, kid? I've had 15 people that wanted me to show up. 15. There are a lot more than 15 people in Congress alone, plus the gubernatorial races. And then you've got everything else going on down ballot. State houses, mayoral campaigns. Virtually none of these people have asked Joe Biden to show up, and some of them have actively prevented him from doing so. You never see this happen with Obama. You never see it happen. Hell, you don't see it with Elizabeth Warren. I think Hillary Clinton has probably made more campaign appearances or at least cut more video clips for people than Joe Biden at this point. Booty Judge, I think, has more indefinitely. Uh, Bernie Sanders, I think, is barnstorming eight different states in the 11th hour of the election. So that takes him more than halfway to Joe Biden's Magic 15 number in the course of a couple of weeks. And Bernie Sanders had a heart attack and is five years older than Joe Biden. He's not exactly coherent either and can only uh, go campaign in deep blue areas because no one else will have him. Somehow, though, Fetterman uh, decided it was a good idea, and I think that I know why. And it has to do with why people don't want Joe to show up in the first place generally for their campaigns. They're worried about him doing this, having a tantrum, saying something goofy, saying something clearly wrong going viral for making a mistake, for sniffing a kid or doing something weird, something loopy, something elderly related, something Alzheimer's related. What does John Fetterman have that no other current candidate in a mainline campaign has that nullifies the worry about such a situation happening and in fact turns it into a positive? He had a stroke. He has brain damage. The hope is that he recovers from that. Maybe he'll convert uh, out of the Democratic Party if he does. John Fetterman doesn't have to worry about Joe Biden saying something zany because he's the one in that, can uh, that candidacy that's known for saying zany things. He stutters. He has a halting manner to him, again, because of his verbal issues. He needs a prompter in order to understand what's being told to him at times. And he says weird shit. He mixes up his words. He constantly says that he wants to be elected to New Jersey. He's in Pennsylvania running for the Senate at the moment. But... He can cover with that if he trots Biden out on stage and Biden fucks up, if he does something crazy like, like he did, I guess Fetterman was right to do this, then it takes the heat off him for a couple of days. The biggest concern in Fetterman's race is his uh, acuity, his mental capabilities. It's not any other issue. It's the fact that he has brain damage. The polls have been narrowing consistently. The latest poll, for the first time, Mehmet Oz is tied with Fetterman. It's not, it, it, that's not the aggregated number. A single poll doesn't mean anything, but it has tightened. It's tightened from near double digits to low single digits, arguably close to a tie, in an election where the GOP in early voting looks like it's going to have much higher than normal turnout. It looks like the higher turnout numbers are, are for, for, for once, they're favoring the GOP. The Democrats' alarm bells are going off, and Fetterman figures if I can get Biden over here and he fucks up, it doesn't damage me and it might even help me. Because the news for that day, I'm just going to stand there and pose with Joe Biden so that it's basically a de facto endorsement. He says a few words, they'll be garbage, and people will look at what he's saying, they'll, they'll think I'm coherent by comparison. I think that that strategy might work. If Fetterman manages to inch out uh, Mehmet Oz, then Fetterman will definitely owe Joe Biden for having dementia that is worse than uh, John Fetterman's own mental issues. Uh, again, though, take a look at this. Joe Biden has the tendency when he's challenged at all to have a tantrum. He gets angry. Uh, he gets angry because I think inside he realizes that he's not really competent at what he's doing. He realizes he's being used as a puppet by other people. He's not really the president, he's the steward. He, he's the, the puppet, they're the puppet master. I think inside it hurts his ego and he chuffs at this. 
And so he gets very angry when he's reminded of this fact. And it doesn't happen very often. I mean, he has a tantrum every time that he's questioned too harshly. Generally, his handlers, the security, and the wagon-circled legacy media so-called journos that don't ask him hard questions, they report on his latest ice cream flavor or how, how beautiful his uh, old man shit smelled that morning. Well, it smelled like peaches and cream. You wouldn't believe it. It's almost like Kim Jong-un levels of propaganda at certain points at this point. Um, it's very difficult for anyone truly independent to penetrate that echo chamber in order to ask him a meaningful question. This would be considered meaningful. Can you imagine if Donald Trump's in office and only 15 people wanted him on stage? How big a, a goddamn story that would be? We get stories about uh, the random Republican, the random neocon, snubbing Trump and not wanting him to campaign for them. It's put up on front page on CNN and the New York Times. Biden has this going on for the entire election cycle to a much greater degree than virtually anyone else. He's become such a toxic figure, so unliked, uh, that even people in states that lean slightly blue aren't having him aboard. It's basically just people with safe seats. They want the shine of posing with the president. And uh, they, they don't take their daughters to that event uh, normally. You'll notice that as well. They don't want to tempt Joe. Um, he, he keeps having tantrums, though, whatever he is to ask a question about this. It's not the only kind of question that can trigger Joe Biden, but it seems to be one of the big ones. Why does he get so inordinately mad at this particular line of questioning? It's because his ego is bruised. That's the biggest explanation for it. I think that he's got just enough mental awareness to understand vaguely what's going on, understands that's also the perception of foreign dignitaries, military leaders, and the general public by and large. They don't recognize him as even being in charge, which is true. He can't even have his uh, normal bowel movement schedule unless he, if Jill, reminds him to take his prune juice shot and then eat his bran muffin. Probably a daily occurrence. Maybe they have to give him a fucking enema to get that shit out because it's an uh, elderly digestion system. I can't imagine he's eating too many T-bones. Ice cream is, is recommended for people with Alzheimer's. It gives them a little bit of comfort and joy in life, I suppose. His tantrums, though, are getting more profuse. And it's, not be, it's, it's mainly because he lacks self-control. He always seems to have had anger issues, but now he's gotten unhinged. Like, he's not mentally all there, dude. That's about all. Peace out.